Hello, this is Patrick at 1CNC West, and what we're going to do in this training video is take a look at applying a profile operation to our part. Okay, so just like before, we're going to head over to the main toolbar, and within our CAM category, we're going to select Stock Toolpaths. That's because that's our 2.5 axis toolpath operations. This time, we're going to select Mill Profile, so I'm going to left click on that. As soon as I do that, my cursor changes to the word Start, and this means that 1CNC is looking for a start location for our profile. Also note that 1CNC is helping us out down here at the very bottom of the screen it says select a profile. I'm simply going to left hand mouse click and as soon as I do that we get these four arrows. Now these arrows determine the side and the direction that you'd like to cut. Now in this example I'd like to climb cut around the outside so I'm going to select this arrow just by left clicking. As soon as I select the arrow my cursor changes to the word end. 1CNC just wants us to determine where we want to terminate our profile, where we want the profile to stop. So we could click anywhere on here. In this example though, I want the tool to go all the way around. So I can simply left click here or I can hit F3, function key 3 on the keyboard, which will automatically select the remaining geometry on the boundary there. Now when we're done selecting, just like before, right hand mouse click, that tells 1CNC that we're finished selecting our geometry. Okay, so these dialog boxes are going to be very similar to our previous facing operation in that now we have a select tool dialog box. You've got your turret position. I have two for that. We have our speeds and feeds here. So there's our spindle speed. I'm going to make that 2000. Our feed rate, this is your XY feed rate. That's your Z feed rate. I'm going to type in 12 inches a minute for X and Y. And for plunge feed rate, I'm going to change this to 4 inches. All this looks good down here. I'm happy with the diameter and tool type and so on. So we'll click next with that. And again, just like within our facing operation, we have our clearances dialog now. So we don't need to worry about this because this is primarily used for 4 axis and 5 axis. So we're going to leave that alone. Here's our rapid Z plane. I have a half inch in there. That's where the tool is going to wrap it if it has to wrap it across in X and Y. And then we have our plunge clearance. This is where the tool is going to start to feed down. Now I have 50 thousandths above the part, which is fine. We have our material Z top set to 0, and I've got my final Z depth set at minus 0.75. All right, now if you happen to have 3D geometry on the screen over here, let's say you had a 3D model, either a solid or surfaces, or maybe just a 3D wire frame, if you select Pick Z, you can take your cursor and digitize anywhere on your geometry, and 1CNC will extrapolate the geometry Z depth and push it right in here. Now it's really no good for wireframe geometry in this example because it's all flat at Z0, but watch what happens if I go Pick Z, and if I just snap that right there, 1CNC extrapolates that. Uh, Z level of that geometry and puts it right in there at zero. For this example though we don't, we're not going to use that. I'm just going to type in minus 0.75 but this is really handy when you've got 3D geometry. So we'll click next. There's two different toolpath styles we can use when uh, profiling. We have the cut levels and we have ramp. Cut levels is simply going to take your tool, move it down to the first cut increment, profile and then reposition to the next cut increment, profile and so on. But if you want a spiral cut, just change this to ramp and then one CNC will perform a ramp profile. I'm going to leave this to cut levels. We'll hit next. Okay, now this auto step over, this is something we don't need to worry about for right now. What when this gets used is when you're starting way out here outside your profile and let's say you want to concentrically make passes around the outside and slowly start working your way in. All right, so we don't need to step over. This is really an XY step over. Don't need to worry about it right now. I'm going to leave that alone. But for rough depths, I do want that. I'm going to make sure that's checked, and my cut increment is going to be 250 thousandths or a quarter inch. And again, you can see that 1CNC nicely has this all graphically laid out for us. I'm going to leave 10 thousandths on the side. That looks good. Don't need to worry about this information here. There is no taper on the part. We're going to leave that alone and just click Next. All right, now finish settings. What does this do? Finish settings allows you to make an extra finish pass at the end of your operation. It uses exactly the same tool, and so for in this example, if I wanted to use that finish pass, it would remove ten thousandths. If I had thirty thousandths here, one CNC uh, would take off thirty thousandths. If I did initiate a finish pass, okay, I'm going to put this back to ten thousandths. That looks good. All right, so we'll click next. So right now I have finishing set to none. But for example, if I set this to bottom only, that means that after we make all of our cut increments and we get to the very bottom, one CNC is going to make an extra pass at the bottom and it's going to remove that ten thousandths. But for now, I don't want to do that. I'm going to leave this set to none. So we're going to click next on that. Now this is how we approach and exit the profile. So you've got lead in style and lead out style. 
and if you want to change the style just left click on this button you can see there's four different options here I like using line arc I'm going to use that and if we look at lead-in style if we come down here here's the the values all broken down for us I'm using a hundred thousandths radius I'm only going to arc in at 45 degrees I'm only going to use 45 degrees worth of an arc in and I don't need this extra line right here see this line so I've got the line length set to zero and I've got the start line angle set to zero as well now I want my exit values to be exactly the same as my entry values so I could uh, go ahead and make sure all these are the same or I can simply click on these little arrows here and by doing so one CNC will populate all the exit values with exactly the same values as your entry values so this is just a shortcut tool you can click and bang your exit values will match your entry values I'm all done with this so I'm gonna click finish As soon as I do that we see the toolpath and we also see that the machining operation has been added to our NC manager thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next video